show how where the cameras are. Are you okay? Check, my check, one, two, three, check, check, check. Check one. Finally, they get check to see two. him. Finally, they get to see him dancing. Oh, hell, you know. Thank you, Thank you for watching. Thanks. 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 Thanks.
Well, I'm still waiting for everybody. Ahmed Rehab has to be here. No, he said you can start until he gets here. He's not getting here until 1237. Is Ahmed coming in? Yeah, if you guys can wait five minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Are you starting on time? Don't start. Are you starting on time or not? Yeah, 1230. Yeah, he said he's going to be here 1230. So let me just introduce our speakers. Give me one minute and then we will start when Ahmed is here. We don't know who the speakers are. No, you are going to speak for sure. Yeah, yeah. And the mayor is here from Plainfield, so have him step up. Those two uh, first, and then Ahmed. Yeah, Ahmed will no, speak no, no, with no. Ahmed. That's the father of Ahmed. Yeah, but Ahmed will speak with Ahmed. Yeah, that, that's fine, but, but we cannot hold it too long. Okay, He's you let us first. Yeah, I will let you know. Okay. Let me just... Uh, Where's the mayor? He can, well, right now, he, he, he can wait, and then once okay. we're done... Let me just introduce you, okay? Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you all for being here under such circumstances. I'd like to thank local media, national media, and we have international press here at Moss Foundation in Bridgeview. Uh, we are going to be starting shortly, but you have the correct spelling and titles of those who are going to be speaking to us this morning. I'm going to start by introducing the former president of Moss Foundation. Many of you know him uh, within our Chicago uh, greater community. He's going to just give us his first and last name and spell it. And then we also will be having a few other speakers. Um, and then just so all of us are on the same page, we're waiting for Executive Director Ahmed Rahab from CARE Chicago, who is on his way. Uh, behind us is the family who's here. But at this time, I'm going to introduce uh, Osama Jamal. He's going to give you his first and last name. And um, we're going to be starting shortly. But if you could just tell us your first and last name. Yeah, and we have a lot of questions here. OK. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Members of the media, members of the community, thank you for coming over. We appreciate your attention to this horrific incident of hate crime. My name is Osama Jamal, spells O-U-S-S-A-M-A. -S -S -A. My last name is J-A-M-M-A-L, former president of the Moss Foundation and the spokesperson. We will start exactly at 12.30, as we promised everyone, so I will be holding. Once we start speaking, that's okay. Once we start, everybody will introduce themselves and their names. You just have to wait. You just have to wait. خلي خلي شيخ حسن يكون جنب شيخ حسن جنب أخونا خلي يكون جنب أخونا دكتور دكتور حماد يكون جنب دكتور حماد um I was told yeah these are the only two families that we we can have yeah he's the Wait for Ahmed Rahab, he's going to be here. That's the speakers, everybody. Come on, the speakers. Sister Ajman, we have decided who's here. Only two from the family. I don't know who's the gentleman. Please, don't tell him. And I'm, I'm sorry, who's the gentleman here? Who you are? I'm Mohammed Fahim. I'm the president of Oman, American Muslims Assisting Neighbors. We are in Plainfield. Please sit beside here so that we can have him. Right over there by the, by the, uh, by, no, 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 by, the, that's why we have to clear this area. From this, over there. We can't have anybody exposed to the camera. Nobody exposed to the camera right now. Everybody in the uh, 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 u
Osama, when is Osama? Osama, but four or five minutes. Four or five minutes? Oh, okay. I can't think about it. My daughter, they'd be in the same class. Can you imagine the guy? It's terrible. I mean, he just turned the wrong, he just flipped it. I like people to introduce themselves when they speak, not come back and forth. Just mark the record, let them know who he is so they can get a little bit more.
Okay, I think we are going to start. <coughs> I will be uh, reading a statement by the Mars Foundation <coughs> on the hate crime incident of six-year-old boy and the attempted murder of his mother. The Mars Foundation deeply mourns the tragic death of a six-year-old boy, Wadi Al-Fayumi, and prays for the swift recovery of his critically injured mother, Hanan Shaheen. Victims of a horrifying incident where their landlord, in an act of hate, shouted the threats and unleashed violence. It is with heavy hearts that we acknowledge this senseless act of hate, which has no place in our community or our society. The brutality of the attack, which involved a military-grade knife, has shocked us all. During these challenges times, we are also profoundly saddened to hear of the loss of lives among our community members' family who were trapped in Gaza due to Israeli bombardment of civilian areas. Emotions and concerns are running high within our community as we grapple with the devastating impact of these events. Regrettably, it is evident that such incidents are in part a result of irresponsible and one-sided views, as well as deliberate neglect and omission of the Palestinian people from the critical discussions. We must address the consequences of unchecked hate and the use of unverified information, as demonstrated in the recent October 10th speech by the President of the United States. We urge the media to exercise responsibility and balance its reporting, recognizing that it plays a pivotal role in shaping public perception. It is through media that people form their understanding of events. We employ, we implore media outlets to provide accurate and comprehensive coverage, fostering a climate of understanding and empathy rather than amplifying division and hatred. Our thoughts and prayers are with all victims of violence, both here at home and abroad. We fervently hope for peace and justice to prevail for all. And we call on leaders and communities to come together in the pursuit of a better, more harmonious world. Thank you for coming here today. Share with us the agony, the fear that we are going through. I would like now to introduce Osama Awar Shayed, Executive Director of the American Muslim for Palestine. Thank you. This heinous crime did not take place in a vacuum. Over the past 10 days, Palestinians, Arabs, Muslim Americans have been subjected to a hateful, hostile campaign. Anyone who supports the Palestinian rights and dares to criticize, dares to criticize the war crimes that are committed by Israel in the Gaza Strip has become the subject of accusation here in the United States. It is not only the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip who are subjected to this campaign of dehumanization. This also has been extended to us here in the United States. This created an atmosphere of hate and anger. Unfortunately, public officials and our media are acting irresponsible. When you have a president who promotes debunked lies, as in the case of the beheaded Israeli children, and when you have a media 
supposedly mainstream media that also refers to debunked lies as in the case of raping Israeli women, we should not be surprised when we see crimes are committed against those who speak for the Palestinian rights. It is not about supporting terrorism. It is not about October 7th. History didn't start on October 7th. And no one marched here or spoke on behalf of the Palestinian rights to endorse what happened on October 7th. What we are for is the Palestinian rights. What we are for is the Palestinian plight. What we are for is what the president himself at one point said that they deserve to enjoy equal measures of freedom and dignity, which they have been deprived from for the past 70 years. The criminals who perpetrated this crime against Wadi and his mother is not the person who stabbed him alone. In fact, it is this atmosphere or charged atmosphere of hatred that is being advanced, that is being promoted by our public officials and by our media. So we call on the president, one, to walk back and to apologize for using debunked stories. He have not apologized yet. The White House walked back that statement by him. But for him to claim that he's seen it with his own eyes and not to apologize for it, that will continue to promote anger and to charge, uh, the, uh, charge bigoted people to commit more crimes. He also needs to come out and state clearly that American people have the right to speak out against Israeli atrocities. When we speak out against Israeli atrocities, we're not joining a so-called day of jihad as the media is trying to portray it. We are standing on principle. We are standing for human rights. And the Palestinian people deserve to be afforded and extended the same human rights that we enjoy. This is not something that comes or emanates from the President of the United States or the U.S. government. This is a God-given right. Their humanity it does not need the certification of the President of the United States, Joe Biden. So we want him also to apologize and to say that Americans who are opposed to the Israeli atrocities have the right to speak out, have the right to demonstrate, and have the right to continue to advance the Palestinian narrative here in America. So we ask our media to be responsible, and we ask you to verify your stories before you broadcast them and you write them, and we ask you to hold our elected officials and public uh, politicians to hold them responsible, and we ask you to hold yourself responsible for the messages that you have been, unfortunately, advancing and promoting while unprovoked. Uh, verified. Thank you. Can you say it's all your name? Yes. My name is Osama, O-S-A-M-A. -A. Last name is A-B-U-I-R-S-H-A-I-D. And I'm the executive director of the American Muslims for Palestine. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce um, Ahmed Rehab, the executive director of Chicago Care Office. And after that, we will be introducing the father of the baby who was stabbed 26 times. <clears throat> this is a heavy day. It is our worst nightmare come true. It is something we try to warn against, creating an atmosphere of dehumanization that puts our community at risk, creates sitting ducks. And it pains me that the sacrificial lamb to this atmosphere was this beautiful, young, six-year-old boy who had his whole life ahead of him, Wadi Al-Fayyumi, who loved soccer, who loved basketball, who loved Lego, who loved to swing, who knew nothing, could fathom nothing about the complicated politics of the world that seemed to have claimed his life in a moment of madness. He was stabbed 26 times, this six-year-old boy. 
with the 12 inch knife in his body still as he entered the autopsy room. And his mother, who was stabbed all over her body a dozen times and had tried to call 911 and came out to see this terrible scene that no parent should ever see, now has to sit in this hospital room all alone without the warmth of this community embrace that we have the privilege of having here today, thanks to this wonderful mosque. Dealing with her injuries, dealing with her emotional trauma, and dealing with the biggest hole that can never be filled, the biggest gap of all, the loss of her child. So I want us today to center her and her child and the family, the father, the pain that is in their hearts is in all of our hearts. This was an attack on all of us. When this individual said, you Muslims must die, this was a message not to the boy and the, and the mother, this was to all of us. We were all stabbed that day. And I want to conclude by asking all of us to commit Muslim, Jewish, Christian, whatever faith, whatever race, whatever nationality you originate from, to commit to a basic level of respect for all humanity and not to engage in assertion that it removes humanity, you know, phrases like human animals, or by omission, or by erasure, by simply not talking about the suffering that is erasure and omission and is dehumanization. Let's commit to being better and having a consistent moral standard. Thank you. Now, <coughs> My name is Ahmed Rehab. Ahmed is spelled A-H-M-E-D. Rehab is spelled R-E-H-A-B. I'm the executive, executive director of the Council on American Islamic Relations, CARE Chicago. I think the father is in uh, extreme emotions and can't speak, but I think his uncle will be able to speak. So I'm going to ask his uncle to speak. <clears throat> First of all, thank you for all coming in. We appreciate it. And that it shows us that everybody is interested. Everybody cares. I'm not a politician, so I'm not going to speak as a politician. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak as a human being. Mm -hmm. And they say I'm an uncle, but I'm more as a grandfather to this little boy. The father... He would like to speak, but the problem is he would like to speak in his own language for his father to understand. I just want to tell the whole world that we live in a country called the USA. We're not in war. And we're not bringing war here, too. What happened that day for a gentleman that he loved that kid to start with, he used to bring him toys. And to hear on the news, from our president that he saw that he's seen some pictures and actually that was not true. The Congress came out and denied it. The reporter herself, she denied it. The soldiers themselves, they said we did not see. This gentleman heard it and it was in his mind. And the only thing he, he saw, he saw that kid and his mom. We, we received some calls. They said, we've been exaggerating. Now, I want to ask anybody here, a 71-year-old man sitting on top of a six-year-old kid stepping her more than 26 times and he was looking in his eyes you tell me 
Is that exaggeration? You tell me what type of man he can do that. I would like to say he's in Kanamo, but he's not. I think our president needs to come out and say something. Our officials needs to come out and say something. We're not in war. The war is overseas. You want war? It's overseas. It's not our war. It's not United States war. And we're gathering here to say we need to save our kids. I'm not just saying about Palestinians. I'm saying about our, our kids. We need to save them. I appreciate it. Thank you for all. <laughs> He's a six-year-old kid. As any other six-year-old kid, he likes to play games. Uh, he's a very kind kid. Uh, he likes to jump up and down. And uh, we received the text message. I hopefully we can send this text message from his mom. That when he was dead, he was less worse to his mom. Mom, I'm fine. You know what? He is fine. He's in a better place. Thank you. I would like to introduce Dr. Imam Omar Suleiman, a national leader and speaker. the famous saying of the mother of Emmett Teal when she said, let the world see what they have done to my boy. Since the mother of Wadir is not here, we say on her behalf, let the world see what they have done to her boy. And I want you to take a moment to appreciate that every single Palestinian child looks like Wadir that every single Palestinian child is just as beautiful, has just as much of a right to be mourned. And when we mourn Wadir, we are mourning all of those children. And when we condemn the hate that killed Wadir, we are condemning the hate that has killed all of those children. And while we appreciate these statements of sympathy, we do not appreciate empty words of condolence without a commitment to course correct. There's a lot of complicity to go around here. We're trying very hard to be pastoral to this family right now. But we cannot ignore the greater environment of hate that is being enabled by every single structure around us right now. The Palestinian catastrophe has not even warranted a word from the mouth of the headest official of this land. And to turn on the TV and to go to your school and to hear from your corporations an acknowledgement of everybody's humanity except for your own. There's more than just the man that stabbed a six-year-old boy here. I want you to think about what was in his head. What type of hate has to be manufactured in the head of a man for him to stand over a six-year-old boy and stab him 26 times? And I want each and every single one of us to take a step back and to actually assess our own humanity in the moment. If you can't shed tears right now, you have a humanity problem. If you are not thinking about how you can use whatever you have, whether you're behind the camera or in front of the camera, whether you're a politician or a media spokesperson, how you can use it to uplift the humanity of these children, you have a humanity problem. If we had to stage a press conference for every single Palestinian child that's being pulled out of the rubble, for every single fetus, 
child that has been miscarried because they don't have access to hospitals in Gaza right now, for every single child that's been kicked in the face and spit on in the West Bank right now by an Israeli settler who knows that they have the full cover of the Israeli government as well as the United States government, then we would be here all day long. I'm asking you to be a human being. I'm asking each and every single person to take a step back and let's ask ourselves the question, have we not learned anything from 9-11? Do we really want to live those dark years again? I can tell you that we, as a Muslim community, as Palestinian Americans, Arab Americans, people who have faced the thrust of dehumanization at the hands of the government as well as the media, are not willing to go back to that. Let's all take a step back and let's acknowledge that no child, no child, no child should ever have to pay for the crimes or for the manufactured image of a criminal on the part of anybody else. Every single child deserves to be treated with the love and compassion and care that we hope that our own children have. So we take a step back and, and please acknowledge that this community needs to grieve right now, that this community is in pain, but that this community has been in pain for the last week and I doubt that there has been a single camera here over the last week. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Imam Omar Suleiman, I-M-A-M-O-M-A-R-S-U-L-E-I-M-A-M, thank you. I believe the father would like to speak Though he does not speak English, he is going to speak in Arabic as a father. Can you guys back up, حبيبي كل الناس اللي هون دمياني أحكي بالإنجليزي وأنا بحكي إنجليزي الحمد لله رب العالمين بس القضية اللي صارت قضية واحد أمريكي أو يهودي مع واحد مسلم على أرض أمريكية فالطرفين بيحكوش إنجليزي فأنا ليش أحكي بالإنجليزي أنا هون لإني أبو الولد مش لإني رجل سياسي أو رجل دين أو رجل أي شيء أنا هون أبو طفل انتهك حقه هون وفي عائلات بالنسبة إلي موجودة في البلاد هي الأحق إنها تفهم شو اللي بصير كلهم هناك بتطلعوا شايفين الأعلام مرفوعة ومش عارفين مين اللي رفعها هو عربي ولا مسلم ولا أمريكي ولا يهودي هدول الناس الأحق إنهم يعرفوا شو اللي صار أنا القضية اللي صارت معي مش قضية أنا ابني هدية لشهد شهيد أنا بتمنى إنهم يتقبلوا مني أهل غزة وأحدة كمان قضية حماس وقضية غزة ما ما بت... هي قضية عالم مش قضية بلد وبلد أنا أصغر من إني أحكي عنها وبتمنى إنه ابني يكون هو رصاصة اللي من خلالها تنحل هاي القضية احنا كشعب مسلم بيحكوا عنا مجرمين وبيحكوا عنا ارهابيين وهم الشعب الاسرائيلي الابطال وما في مشكلة عنا بهذا الحكي بس انا ما بدي ابرر ولا بدي احكي اي شيء بس انا بدي افهم هم شو تفسيرهم لهذا الحكي يعني لما واحد زلمة رجل ما يحاول اصلا يقترب من الاب راح اقترب من الأم وهاي الأم بنت من بنات فلسطين وبرضه ما قدر عليها شوهت وجهه فراح جاب سكين وانتقم من الولد فإذا هيك هم مستواهم فعن جد إحنا حيوانات لأنه بنسمح لهيك شغلات إنها تصير فأنا بتمنى إنه تكون هاي الشغلة اللي تصحينا إحنا بداية وابني انا مش خايف عليه والحمد لله رب العالمين حبيبي شكرا لكم
I will introduce Dr. Abdul Ghani Hamadi, the chairman of the uh, Council of Islamic Organization of Greater Chicago, as a physician. My name is uh, uh, Abdul Ghani Hamadi, A B D U L G A N Y, Hamadi H A M A D E H. I am the chairman of the Council of Islamic Organizations, which is the umbrella organization. For all we, this mosque and 40 other mosques uh, are under. We represent the Muslim community here in the Chicago area. But I'm going to speak to you what well, yeah, I should be in school today. Instead, where are we? At his funeral. And I'll speak to you as a physician. I have been to multiple missions throughout the world, including conflict areas, including immediately into Syria after the earthquake. I have seen children under the rubble. I have seen children torn to pieces from war. I have never thought I will see this here in America. I have never thought I will see this barbaric action here in our land. And our hearts ache because of that. Because we, as me as a physician, I have never imagined that we will lose our humanity to that degree and treat children where we are supposed to heal them and take care of them. This hurts us as humans, as physicians, as faith leaders, and I hope this will be a trigger for all of us to take a step back and rethink what we say and what we, uh, and for all politicians and the media, as mentioned before. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Mayor of Plainfield who uh, joined us here and would like to express a few words. Uh, I'm Mayor John Argadellis of Plainfield, Illinois. Um, Argadellis, A R G O U D E L. I S, and I'd first like to express my heartfelt condolences to the family and the community on the loss of uh, young Wadea. As a parent, I can't even begin to imagine the pain experienced by the family, especially and and of all who a young man is lost. By listening to the descriptions of of him, he sounds like an all-American boy, and here in America, we don't. We don't expect this kind of action. It, it was shocking to us. I, I heard about it, and um, certainly heard about the hate crime motivation of it yesterday. And uh, if you look at my mayor post, uh, I was up at 3 a.m. just just tossing and turning over this. Um, I've lived in Plainfield all my life, and you know, as mayor, we make great efforts to be inclusive of our community. We have a a diverse community of many people. My, my good friend Mohammed Fahim, who's uh, been a strong representative of our local mosque, uh, he currently serves on our plan commission, and everybody in Plainfield is included and, and a part of our community and our government. Uh, we are one Plainfield, and this is a shocking event to happen in our community of 45,000 people where um, you know we all live in harmony together and work with one another. Um, the outpouring from the residents of Plainfield has been tremendous. Um, I, I post frequently on Instagram and, and uh, Facebook, and the community, and especially the non-Muslim community, is what can we do, how can we help, how can we show our support. And uh, we will be having a vigil tomorrow evening at, two, at 8 p.m. at our Park District Gymnasium, and I expect a very large showing of our community saying that we reject hate, we reject discrimination, and we stand for one playing field for all, one America for all, and equality for everyone. So again, I, I want to extend my heartfelt condolences on behalf of myself personally and on behalf of our community. Um, no parent should ever have to have to experience this. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you Mayor. And I would like to introduce um, Mr. Harry Benton III, uh, Illinois House Representative for the 97th District. 
My name is Representative Harry Benton, B-E-N-T-O-N. -E I represent the 97th district where this happened and been a resident of the area my whole life. I, I grew up off the street that um, the tragedy happened. And I'm here to support the family, support the community, and let everybody know that here in Illinois, we should have love in our hearts. And I don't want to see this politicized because this is a, an international, this is a international experience. And here in Illinois, here in the United States, we need to love each other and we need to show compassion because we do have a diverse community in Plainfield and the surrounding areas. And one of the things that I truly want to convey through the conversations that I've had is we're taking the proper precautions and making sure that, that we are putting more patrols on the street, making sure that people feel comfortable, people feel safe from all walks of life, all communities. And I've seen the community gather around and become one. All faiths, all backgrounds have come together to make sure that we support the family, we support the community, and safety is at the first and foremost of all of our, our uh, sorry, it's a little, it's kind of throwing me off a little bit, because I have a five and a half year old, she'd be in the same class, and it's, my wife and I have been talking about it all weekend, and we couldn't couldn't imagine so honestly forget the politics I don't care about the politics I'm getting sick and tired of this crap going on around the country in the state anywhere kids are kids let kids be kids hold people accountable make sure that this doesn't happen anywhere else too much has happened throughout this country too much hate and I think about my daughter all the time, and this is, you want to think that this is an isolated situation, but there's there's so much hate out there, and we need to stop from everywhere, because my daughter would be in the same grade, and it's just, hug your kids a little bit tighter, because that doesn't happen for everybody tonight, so that's all, that's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Representative Benton. We are really appreciated. It is interesting to know that after 9-11, we had so much support from our neighbors and friends and interfaith groups and who came to our mosque. And we have not seen the hate we have seen today. For something that is happening overseas, what happened in 9-11, what happened in our own soil, but we had the greatest support for something to happen overseas and we see this backlash of hate was really something else. Thank you for attending this, this conference. We appreciate being here. We hope that we never have to come back here and talk about any incident that involves any innocent people in this country or around the world. We just pray for peace everywhere. Thank you. Salam alaikum. Hey, it starts with you guys, with the cameras. Let's you need to confer. You guys are media. You can't just say what you want to say without having evidence. That's where it starts. That's where this happened. So you guys got to go out there and do your job to protect people.
guys. Just please, you need to know and to look in both eyes, not in one eye. We are not killing the kids. We are not. We are not raping the, the ladies. Who are you? Lied publicly, he has to correct it publicly. No one looks at the White House uh, website. It has to be public. Exactly. He needs to apologize. At least. And, and the media, CNN, whoever did it publicly, they have to correct it publicly. No shitty little thing on a, on a website that no one looks at. For you, me, myself, if I die, I will die stand as a man. You told and too many people like this. Just we need to fix the situation. It's very easy, guys. I'm seeing we like need to fix the situation. On social media, everywhere I'm seeing that that fraud. Hey, it's not about getting the story first, guys. It's, a, it's about confirming it. That's all I got to say. Exactly. You know, we, uh, we can come out here and we can spread all the propaganda that we want to spread. You know, if you just want to report on anything that's said or anything that's heard or any hearsay, you guys can do that, but it's not the truth. You need to confirm your sources. You need to confirm the story. We, what we know is a six-year-old boy was killed. A six-year-old boy was killed. That is something that you need to report. That's something that you need to report. You know, without confirmation, it's not news. Without confirmation, it's not news. And you guys are all journalists. You all went to school for this. How they stop the food, the water on the on Gaza? Go back, go back to the basics, guys. Ma what you learned Max, when you were a journalist. Max Blumenthal, Learn, confirm the source, guys. Max Blumenthal of the GreyZone.com. He showed it. It was David Ben Zion, the fanatic settler, who who told an Israeli uh, lady reporter, and she said it. And Israel denied it that 40 baby beheading Max Blumenthal of the GreyZone.com has shown that to be false. Anyone can look at it. It was David Ben Zion who previously said to wipe out Palestinian villages. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming, guys. I hope you get a good Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You pick it up.
gonna do, huh? How many lies? How many lies, guys? How many lies? Thank <laughs> you. 